Hello, this is an important note on the use of tides and currents in uh, electronic charting programs. And um, in, uh, particularly, I want to show how that you test to see that the harmonics that you have are accurate. And we have lots of ways to do that. I want to show some very quick ways to check both tides and currents for local U.S. data and then also do a more exotic check and show for a foreign foreign port and in particular i'm going to do the suez canal because we have video we have a did a bit of a study of the grounding of the ever given and uh, we used some tide data and i can check to see if that was valid so here the, here's my agenda i'm going to do some local tides and local currents and then we go straight to the suez canal and these will be different harmonics um, Oh, okay, then I might show something else if I remember it. Um, okay, so that's the main, main thing to do now. And so let me set this agenda aside. And so, uh, first of all, I better check to see that I have the right, whoops, sorry, that I have the right, um, that I have the right uh, harmonics loaded. So I'm going to go to the preferences the preferences and then gribs and harmonics and right this is the one we want to use dwf is david something flatter i'm sure and this is the same set of harmonics that we loaded in the two videos we have on how you load uh, mac and pc how you load harmonics so that's the one we're using i believe that's the best available uh, for the U.S. waters right now, best that I know of. That's e easy to get to. Okay, so uh, that's okay. So we're right there. And now we turn on, let's do the tides first. And let's just do the, some, so the quick ones first. And because then we can look at, uh, let's see, where are the tide gauges here? Are there any? Uh, well, there's one here. There's one gauge here, and that is... Um, what is that? Port Madison. So there's uh, Port Madison and there's the tides right now according to the harmonics calculated from this program. It has no contact with NOAA at this point. So now what we want to do is where, where do we check where's the truth for this particular time right now. And so we go to a browser. Oh, I've got one over here. Uh, we go to a browser and we go to tides okay tides and okay tides and currents dot noah dot gov it's really easy tides and currents dot noah dot gov and you say yes you click your state now you go up here and well, you could probably put in the actual station number but the way that I do it, I go down here and click this one and say Tide Predictions. And then it's loaded them here, but you don't see it. So then you zoom in, and I'm near Ag... Oh, where am I, actually? Uh, where am I? I'm at Port Madison, near, um, near just south of Agate Pass. Okay, so here is uh, Seattle. Okay. So that must be, that's Vashon. No, here's Seattle. This must be it right here. Yeah, Port Madison. And then you just click that one, and there's today's tides right now. So that's what we're, oh, let's see. How am I going to show both of these? Um, well, maybe, yeah, that's a little bit. Does that show it? Okay. So that, oh, now do we have the right times? Ah, I was experimenting with the international, so I have this at UTC. Let's get rid of that and go back here to the program. Sorry for that. And go to preferences. We'll have to change it back in a minute, but units, and then go to local time and say okay. Now the NOAA data, the NOAA data generally, let's see how they tell us that. Uh, they tell us that mean low or low water, and are they telling us a time zone? It would be nice if they did. Ah, they're not, but this is the local time. That's too bad. Uh, but you could click a few buttons and you would see that you are actually on Pacific Daylight Time. Okay, 
So then let's see what we had here. We go back and details. And uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, if I weren't trying to get it all into the movie, it'd be a little bit easier. Okay, so we had a low water at 310 and it was 2.89. Look at that, 308 at 2.89. That's pretty close, amazing. Okay, what do we have then? We have a high water at 858. Now that's, you know, that's off a couple minutes, but then that's 9.19. That's spot on. Just the minutes are off a little bit. And now this is, uh, oh, also you can go in here and set the, oh, and we're going to do it in a minute anyway. So here's 2.51 p.m. That's 14.51, 2.05. You see, that's spot on. And 9.36, that's, uh, that's 21.36, and we have 17. Look at that. that. That number, both the minutes, and that's a spot on. So in other words, that set of harmonics seems to be doing perfectly fine on these. In fact, I'm not, um, we could, what you would do, let me just say what you would do, and I'm not going to do it with the tides. But what you would do is go here where you say more data, more data. Is that going to work? Tide predictions. And then you come up here and you're going to get, click here for the annual publication. So go down here and you set this. You want the units in feet. This is local. This is a magic setting of the time, which means in the, when daylight savings time's in effect, it'll give you daylight savings. And when standard times, it'll give you standard. So it'll switch automatically. Here, for some reason, it gives you different datums. I would always take this mean lower low water. That's what's used throughout the US. You would have to have a very, it would have nothing to do with nautical science or navigation or tides if you change that. But if you had beachfront property, you may want to, you may want to look at So, Oh, in fact, this one, ah, okay, very good. I'm happy to see that. There's other places where you can actually change that, sadly enough. Okay, we want a 24 hour clock and that's that. And then what you do is come back here and say, click here for the annual publication. And then uh, what's left here? Why didn't it just do it? Uh, or maybe it did. Okay, so maybe that downloaded it. But anyway, it brings you a PDF. Download, oh no, not quite yet. Here, PDF, you got different formats. We want PDF and we download it. Now it downloads it. And it should be five pages. The first page is just a blank. Uh, the first page is just a blank uh, description. Uh, that what you got there, and then you've got a regular tide tables for that particular station. There's no distinction anymore between you know there's ref there's a so-called harmonic stations and there's subordinate stations, but there's no book of there's no book of references using a table two corrections. There's no such thing anymore. So anyway, you get this, and then you can if you want to to be really careful. You could go in and choose sometimes when you got like this half moon here. That would be a neap tide, a neap tide. Check a few of those, and then when you get a like a solid moon here or a hollow or all blank, that would be. Let's see if those are really higher. See, that's like 11 feet. And then you go to the half moons here, you're down, well, still 11 feet. Didn't change that much, you know, f over the cycle here. But anyway, in some months it will. If you get up near the solstice, you get near the two solstices, you'll see big swings. But anyway, then you can just check it again. And you, you do exactly that. You just look at, look at that. Now, oh, okay, so here's the trick play. Wait a minute, I forgot to say something. Here's a trick play. This program has this wonderful feature that you just go in here and set, click this calendar on the left. Then you go and put in any year or date. You know, you can put August or, you know, you can go to May and go to May 11th and then say, okay, now I'm looking at the currents on tides on May 11th and so on. So that's what you need if you want to do your sophisticated checks where you're going in and actually pulling out days you know, from something in the future or something in the past. If these constants, if these harmonic constants are correct, then they should be correct, you know, years back and years forward, uh, not just to today or tomorrow. Although, frankly, they do get slightly better with time. Uh, but you see what we've got going here now. That, that set of, okay, so that's that. 
All right, where's our check sheet here? Okay, so that's now, okay, spring and neap, I just punted that one, said you can do that on your own. Now let's do currents. Uh, let me close this, so it's, we don't need this anymore. We don't need this anymore. Okay, so we're back here. I'm gonna close this and close down the tides and turn on the currents. And there's two stations here. In, this is a, this is actually a subordinate station out here, and this is a primary station here. By the way, let, I'll show you, the, the thing I was gonna show you, I'll, I will show you before we go on. This, notice that this station's in essentially the right place. If you get an older set of harmonics that's not, probably not quite as good, but an older set, one of the things that Noah did in the last, and I don't know exactly when, it could be two years ago or, maybe last year or sometime in the near recent past, Noah updated, um, updated this, uh, these data and put these stations in the right place. So if you get this uh, agate, see if I right click this, or wait a minute, you can also do this. You just bring this mouse over. Ah, okay, this is a very interesting one. This has data, this, has, this one has data at a lot of different depths. A lot of different depths. But let's just right click it, right click it, and go to, oh, I'm right clicking the, not the label, I'm clicking the title, I mean the icon. All right, so what's this? Agate Pass South End. So here's another sophisticated feature of this display. I can click up here and see, uh, I can see all of the depths. And these are, this is an unusual station. Normally, normally in these uh, current stations, you're gonna have something near the surface. You know, maybe the closest we've got is 50 feet or 20 feet, 50 feet, something like that. Then it dives down, you go into 100 feet, 200 feet, I don't know. But this station has a lot of, sh and, and so in cases like that, then we just go right to the top and take the one nearest our draft, the nearest the, the, the water we're in and use it. And just hope that that's about right. But here's a case where you've got two, five, nine, 12, a lot of boats, 15 feet. There's a lot of boats down there tied up at the dock that'll go easily into that kind of draft. So it's, it would be interesting to look at the, the different speeds here and then you have to do some kind of average. But in fact, don't we see that if we look here? See, if you put here, if you just put your mouse on there, then you're actually seeing the effect of how the water depth Oh, wait a minute, that's not, that's maybe going out of the picture. Let me move this up a little bit. Now, now I'm gonna put this on here. Now you got everything in the, I think the thing could have gone out of the video. Um, in fact, the whole thing may be gone out of the video. Okay, there you go. All right, so now what you see here is, uh, this is this is a little bit of a divergent. Well, I'm not checking the currents now, I'm just talking about the currents. But you see the currents at all these depths, two, it goes to 0.2, it looks like it's, it's 0.2 knots, then 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. I, that actually doesn't change. That's interesting, it doesn't change at all. In fact, it doesn't change directions much. Ah. Looks like we're paying for a lot of current meters there that we may not need. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, some places you'll see this change. You can't really make a prediction. Like in some cases you'd like to think, there's arguments that you would think it should veer, the current direction should veer as you get deeper in the water. But if you hunt around and it maybe should get weaker, something like that, none of that holds, none of that counts. If you have a nice program like this and you go sniffing around all the currents in Puget Sound and look at them and look, and you have a program with this power to it where you can go in here and, um, and look at, see here's a station up here. Is that a station? Yeah. See, there's one with a bunch of depths. What is that? That looks like it's all the same as the other one. Well, anyway, that's Point Jefferson. Strange, the same sort of currents. Um, but you can. But generally, what you'll see is there's no there's no particular uh, rhyme to it. It'll be anything. It could get stronger as you get deeper. It could get weaker. It could veer or it could back. Anyway, so here we are, and we want to test these currents right, right here, details. And let's just say, let's just for the heck of it say we'll test it at nine feet. Although, it, look, it really didn't matter. So there's the currents at nine feet at Agate Pass 
right now, live time. Oh, okay, so I think I went away from that page too early. Oh, maybe not. So here we are, I'm back at tidesandcurrents.noah, but now just see, and then down here at the bottom, there's other ways to do it. You could probably type agate pass here. A-G, agate, A-G-A-T-E, agate pass. Agate pass south end. Although you see the trouble when I do that is I'm I'm not a hundred percent I'm not a hundred you know I'm well there's nine feet how did it even know I wanted nine feet anyway I I don't feel comfortable with that because how does it know what I really want so what I usually do here in a case like that I want current predictions and then I oh maybe it's because the picture was zoomed like that. But did I? I didn't zoom their picture. Well, anyway. Oh, no. Okay. So they probably did find the right one, and they zoomed it. But you see the virtue of doing it this way, typing in current predictions, and then let it make the, make the map, and then you click the one you want. Then you're, sure, uh, then you're sure you're at where you want. The purple, the purple data, the purple buttons are one. Oh, yeah, here it is right here. Harmonic. Oh, you, can you see that? I got to be careful here. I apologize. Let me get everything in the realm uh, closed. Let me just get everything back in the realm where I know the video is going to capture it. Okay. So uh, back here. Um, so there's the there's there's a harmonic station, and there is uh, oh look at today's oh yeah there it did it popped up. Okay good. Now let's come back to our data, which then sort of acted weird. And then, um, whoops. Somehow I'm, I'm, I'm bumping things with my fingers. Okay, so here are the currents. I guess we're just going to have to pass through them one by one like that. But let's look at, well, right now, for example, well, let's go right now. What time is it? This is, uh, oh, it's near, oh, that's interesting. It looks like what they do is highlight the nearest one. Highlight the nearest one. That's nice of them. That's slack, so we're pretty near the slack. And ours says that we're going to get a slack here. If I go here, it looks like we're going to get a slack at about 1453, something like that. Uh, slack it says 3 p.m. Um, August 13, August 13, agate pass. Oh, two feet. Where am I here? Nine feet. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Well, for whatever that's worth. So it does matter when you're making these comparisons to be sure you're at the right depth. So let's pretend I did that on purpose to illustrate the point. So you see at nine feet, at nine feet, the slack is really 1,500. 1,500, just as it says here. And then coming after that will be at 536. That would be 15, 1736. It's 345 ebb. 1536, 15, or 1736 is a 3.45 ebb. Okay, so there, there it is, 3.45 ebb, and so forth. And then what was the, uh, no, that was actually the flood. Didn't say ebb, did it? That's a flood. Oh, yeah, that's a flood. Now, the previous ebb was 2.24 at 1106. Uh, okay. 2.24, see, look at that, 2.24, let me see, so bang on. So that's the way we're checking the currents. And again, I would, if you really want to be confident, or this is the minimum you should do, and you see how long that takes, seconds. When you get a new set of harmonics, you just want to test a few stations you might care about in a, in a cruise or in a yacht race or something like that. Just take a few minutes and spot check it like that to be sure you're right. I'm not going to do it now, but I can show you, oh, maybe I will do it now. Um, you can, these could be wrong. Let me load a different, um, uh, so you want to check those. Yeah, like that. And I'm going to leave the, leave the, uh, I'm going to leave the, um, 
doing a nip, nip tides and uh, spring tides uh, for later. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, I'm going to close that. Close that. I'm going to shut off the currents. Now I'm going to go in here. I'm going to now I want to take a look and do the more exotic one. I want to check the Suez Canal. Uh, okay, I got to answer that. I'm going to pause. Okay, I am back now and then okay so what I wanted to illustrate was this I'm going to go to the preferences uh, gribs and I'm going to load the one this is one from um, it's an old one from WX Tide a couple years ago 2005 actually and uh, however it includes Egypt it includes Egypt, and that's the one I want to test. And, and what I'll show is, and what I found out is, it's actually pretty good for Egypt. On the other hand, it's not that good for the, this area around here. So let's just illustrate that, and I, it'll bring up an interesting point, I think. Okay, now look, I've done that, and when you see this with this program, you've got, it's got a lot of data always here, so you gotta, I can't just quit. I can't exit out of here and quit. I've got to roll this up manually. Roll that up manually and be sure you hit the OK button. That's the way, that's what causes things to happen. All right, now, uh, now let's turn on the currents. Okay, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pursue this other than saying that, uh, notice where the stations are. The stations are here and here, right? Whereas the actual stations are up here and in here. And there's some, there's other recent, there's also recent harmonics that are shipped in popular products, even some very popular apps for the iPhone, so forth. And they will have that station located here and here and so forth. And furthermore, be wrong. But anyway, let's not get into that now. I just want to stress that if you have any kind of app in your phone, no matter if it's world famous, and it predicts the tides, you want to go and check it to see how, how well it's doing. Okay, so that's that. Uh, but now, and now do another trick here. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Before we do tricks, I got to go in here, preferences and uh, units. I got to go to UTC because we're going off into the international world. Okay, UTC. Now, let's see if this works with another trick. Or a trick, it's a, just a really nice feature of a QTVLM. You can save scene. Like I've got a certain, I've got a part of the world, and I've got a certain zoom level, and I can save it. Now, I've saved this for the Suez Canal under F10. So if I hit F10, bang, there I am. Look, suppose I say, and then see, I can turn on the, I can turn on the tides here. And all we had was the tides, and this is the Suez, that's the Suez Canal going up here, and this is the Suez Tide Station here. But if I say, oh, I made a mistake, let me go back, F9, now I'm back here. Okay, F, okay, whatever, F10. It's a really nice feature, um, and it's, uh, I'll have to write that up, how you do it. It's with the, well, I'll tell you, and then you, it's different on a Mac and a PC, but it's basically you do control F9, 9, 10, 11, or 12, F9, control F9, and then that sets it, uh, but then, then you just hit F9 and it'll go back. But it may take a little something else. All right, let's do this. And now here's what's going on. Here's, these are the tides here. And here's what I want to check, and I, I'm not sure everybody is, well, I know everybody's not seen this, but we did a video on this grounding of the Suez Canal, and part of it was, and it was in a sort of elaborate thing, where I wanted to argue, I did argue in fact, that part of the contributing factor was a following current, a rather strong following current, maybe up to four knots. And so then, but none of that's ever been discussed in the newspapers or whatever. And so, uh, so this, is, uh, this is the argument about how we how they piece together at least the thoughts. Now, it's not proof. We don't have the actual data, but I think it's true. And then it had a following current of up to four knots. And then here's a little inset that you can look at. Well, in the, if, go look at the video. The video discusses this in detail. But here's an inset on why it's hard to steer going in a down when you got current behind you. The downbound vessel has a right-of-way for a reason, and this is explaining that reason. But here's the issue. We had to look at the tides, and it turns out that the tide height, and this is like a hydraulic head almost. When this is high water here, it's driving this water up this way. 
and you, it's all discussed, and it's well documented in the uh, in the Suez Canal Navigation Guide, and uh, and so it was almost a spring tide, and so we used this, and here's the forecast that we that was made based on the. Um, uh, actually, this is this should be this actually spelled wrong. That should be W X tide 32, not X tide 32. W X tide 32. That's a huge mistake. Uh, anyway, the 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 the, the, the harmonic I'm using here is X tide 32, and so I just want to show. And now the important thing for us to know is did did was our was our tide predictions right? Was our tide predictions right? And so here's how you can check if you live in Europe or France or Germany somewhere and you've got somewhere a set of harmonics. Remember, it's hard to get these harmonics because in Europe and outside of the United States, or just not just, not just uh, anywhere, I mean everywhere, essentially everywhere, these nations, they copyright, they consider the harmonic constants proprietary property, proprietary property. And so you can't get them anywhere, but they're floating around. They're they're uh, floating around in the um, black market. It's not really black market. Well, in fact, it's not black at all because 10 years ago or 15 years ago, these were all public domain. The harmonic constants were years ago public domain, and you could go get them. They were published in research papers, and then uh, then uh, many nations decided that uh, they didn't want to treat it that way anymore. And so if you have if you have one of these old set of harmonics for another nation or something, then it could well be that they're useful. But the question is, how are you going to know that? How are you going to know it? And here's a way, now we have a way to know it. And the trick play is, you go back to Noah. Now, I don't know, and well, okay, you've got to do something different. Because I don't know the link to get there, and I couldn't find it from this page. Well, is there any chance that you, let me just, um, let me close this. Oh, no, I've lost, I've lost the thing. Um, here, you go here. If you go in here, and then you drop down advanced historic data. I wonder if that, no, that's only historic data here. So that won't work. So let me tell you what, to, what you have to do here is go to our navigation blog, and that would be uh, uh, Nav David Birch Navigation Blog, and look in the article on, uh, um, it's the article just before this one, on when they, right here, no more tides, and this is when we finally realized that Noah had changed their policy on the tides and currents. And so here is, um, uh, here is no more tides and currents. So in this article, you may have other ways to find this. But anyway, you go here and you click this. And this then is historic data. This is historic data. And remember, we're relying on the philosophy, not philosophy, we're relying on the science that if these harmonic constants are good, they're good for long periods of time. You could go back to the 18th century in principle. I mean, things are going to drift off a little bit, but anyway. So then, so here is the data, and we might as well use the most recent. You could use any if you wanted to, but we might as well use the most recent because we're just testing the constants. And so now to know, and, and oh, and here's the other twist to it. Prior to 1921, prior to this year, NOAA used to publish international tide and current data. So we could, prior to then, just go into NOAA and get the data for the Suez Canal. Well, if that's one of the stations they covered, which in fact it is. So then you could go and get that data and then just compare it. Or for some place in France or Germany or Netherlands, Spain, Italy, whatever, Greece. You could look up, the, uh, you could look up this uh, tides and currents at the NOAA site and then compare your harmonics with that. Well, that's not available anymore. NOAA no longer has up-to-date data for international waters. But they do have the old data is still there. You see, it goes all the way back some years to 2008. But there's really no point in going way back. Just take the latest ones. So here's what you do. You would just go, first of all, we have to find out of these four volumes. No, these are, okay, there's two of tides, I mean currents, 
and four of tides. And we're checking tides. So first of all, just ch just take anyone. Just open the first one. And then go down here to like page three and look at page three to find out what part of the world you care about. Like if you're looking for something in this part of Greenland or something, that's volume two. If you're on this side, it's volume three. This, and there's volume one for Europe, would all be volume one, Atlantic Ocean. But this is a little tricky. This wraps around here. So we want the one called Pacific Ocean. Pacific, so it's not this one. It's a Pacific Ocean one. Oh, and they're not numbered one, two, three, four either. But Pacific Ocean, it's this one we want, right? So there's the one we want. And then I would just do Command F and oh, Suez. I've obviously done it before I tried this. All right, then I hit twice, hit three times. Oh, what's this tell us? Datum below. Oh, it tells you when it was updated. We don't know. Okay, and then you click the next one. Then you're down into the real data. Okay, now, uh, and then you can, again, it's always recommended that you check, uh, check, uh, check the neap tides and, you know, the full moons and the, the, the full moons and the no moons, the new moons, and then the half moons, that would be the spring tides and the neap tides. Check those. But here, we'll just go to, let's go, I always like Bastille Day. So I'll do July 4th. Let's just see here. Can I go here? July 4th. Let me see if I can do a trick. Uh, plus July 4th. Now that's July 4th. Okay, that's that one. And let's do Bastille Day, July 14th. They might even be close to the, you know, ranges in the tides, but we don't really know. And there's Bastille Day. Uh, so, but let's just look. The actual grounding was in March, but then again, the, the moon, you can't, you can't predict moon, relative moon positions. That's no good. You can't, tide tables aren't good anymore after present time. But if you just look at this area, you see it hasn't, here's like, Maybe there's a seven, 6.8. So there's a high tide of like six or six, five. Here's five, five. You know, here's, here's five, eight, six. So it's really not that dramatically changing with the month. Now you could study the, you know, declination tides and so forth. But anyway, let's just stay with those two. That will do here. And those are the ones we're gonna check. Let's just see, okay. So I have to go in here, and that is 2020 details. So I've gotta to go to the calendar, and, and I'm illustrating how you would do this for any place in the world that you want to. I'm just doing the one we happen to care about right now. And so I want uh, 2020, oh, actually I can do that. In August, then we're going to July. Just, just these are like two random dates I picked holidays in two countries. Um, okay, so July, and then I want July 4th. Okay, by the way, July 4th, oh, look at that. We both agree it's a Saturday. That's good, that's a, that's a minimum test. Okay, we both agree it's a Saturday. And so what, oh, now we have to think through this. When you look at these tables, see, we're using old fashioned tables. These aren't like the modern tables, which correct for daylight and do this and that. This is the old days when we had to think a little bit on this. And they don't tell us the time zone. This, so what they do is tell us that the time meridian is 30 degrees east and this is zero, zero is midnight, 12 is noon. Now from that, we're supposed to figure out what time zone it is. Well, it's, it's, a, it's Eastern longitude, so it's, and, and 30 divided by 15 is two. So these are two hours, zone is two, and it's east, it's east. So normally in the, in the, in the Western hemisphere over here, we have to, when we use these tables, we had to add two hours to these numbers. But over here in Egypt, you're gonna have to subtract two hours. So the times that we're looking for, if we're on UTC, oh, but it's going backwards the other way. Uh, so we're, we're not going to U2C, we're going, we're, 
we're going from these guys local time to UTC. All right, let's we can manage that. All right, so uh, what's the peak here? So there's 843. Uh, let me just see if I can move this over. So we're July, July 4th, and we have a high water at 845, and then we have to take away two from here. So this, well, let's add two to here. That's maybe the easiest. So this is now 10, you know, like 1045 and it's 5.6 or five, yeah, what's a high here? 5.6, 5 5.6 at about 1046, so that agrees. Then we have a low water of, uh, we have a low water uh, at about two, at about 445 or 441, that's like 0.9. Point nine, actually almost one, but they get point eight. So we're off just a little bit on that one. We're a little bit higher. Then the next one is the next one is like here now we're a lot better. Fourteen fifty five. That's sixteen fifty six. We're right on the right time. And then it's point eight. And this one and this is point nine. And this one goes up here uh, to twenty one. And that's twenty three thirty six. And it's five point nine. And it's six point zero. Okay. I actually I'm going to stop. I think I'm not going to do Bastille Day after all. Uh, I apologize to my uh, French friends. Um, so um, there's a way you check it. And the, uh, we can't do the currents. I don't have any, any current data to check right now, but you would check the currents the same way, but then you would have to go back. And, well, maybe I'll make another video on checking currents in some places in some foreign ports because that's valuable. But that is now kind of a long story on how you check tides and currents uh, harmonics using uh, using the archive NOAA data. Now stop there.